Today is a traveling day, but before traveling, I thought let's make this quick video about Next.js 15 because the moment the news dropped, I am in a little bit of a panic mode. The moment Next.js new version rollout, it's a good way and it's a good time to show a little bit panic because a lot of things changes in the next JS and we're going to discuss a whole lot about it. By the way, I'm traveling to Mumbai for uh, a really nice event by NVIDIA. Jensing is coming in for there, uh, the CEO of NVIDIA. I got invited to the event. It's a really fantastic event and um, I didn't open it up that, hey, I'm traveling there because a lot of people uh, said that, hey, you should not really release the information out. I got instructed for that, but uh, finally the video is out. Uh, by the time you'll be watching this video, I'll be already in Mumbai, so it's okay. Uh, anyways, it's really fun. I'll be posting and sharing the information about uh, all these events and how the fireside chat with the CEO of NVIDIA went up uh, on my Twitter account, so go ahead, follow me up. Anyways, coming back onto the point, uh, the new version of Next.js is out and it's a point where if you have anything in production with Next.js and if it is not on Vercel, then you need to be panicked. Uh, not much, but a little bit. You need to worry about that. Let me walk you through that, how it actually goes and how it works and why I'm making this video. By the way, I'll definitely walk you through with all this. We are going to together read all of this. Next.js 15 is out. And the whole point is this line. Next.js 15 is officially stable and ready for production. We are going to take this down in a minute. Uh, but first of all, let's go ahead and talk about what's happening. How is it happening? So Next.js 15 is out and there are two ways of handling the Next.js. The one version is Vercel. So if you have taken the path where everything is going down the lane of Vercel, then okay, no worries at all. But the chances are high that a lot of people who use Next.js actually use some kind of VPS or maybe an EC2 or maybe some another service to deploy their application. If you're choosing this route, then okay, no problem. Vercel is really, really nicely built as an hardware so that it is closely uh, binded with the Next.js, any version of Next.js. They support everything out of the box. But chances are that if you are going with this route of uh, VPS or an EC2 or you have deployed the Next.js on your own, then obviously you have two things to worry about. The first one you have already handled is the middleware. Running middleware out of the Vercel is no joke. The serverless environment doesn't really support out of the box the VPS or the EC2 or you have deployed anything on the DigitalOcean app. No, it's not going to work. So chances are high that you have already customized and have taken care of the middleware itself. Another thing that you have to worry about is uh, the cache. That is a really, really big issue. And turns out the more you work in the industry, you realize that when people say that the two difficult problem of computer programming are naming the variables and uh, the caching related issue, validating it, invalidating it, all those things. So yes, this is really a big issue. We recently faced this issue. Uh, we recently rolled out a product uh, coding hero. Uh, so if you go to chaiko.com slash ch, uh, this is the whole platform that we built uh, so that people can apply for to become the coding hero. They can win the cash prize of 5,000 rupees. And already we are hosting 60 live classes. So you can just check out the events and we are working on it. We are building it up. If you wish, you can also apply on that. So notice here, so many live classes are happening and whoever gets the highest voted every month, uh, I'm uh, donating a small scholarship of 5,000 rupees and I'm planning to make it more. So we built initially this whole thing on the next JS itself. And then we quickly realized that it might shoot up the bill and we are not ready for that kind of a traffic on the Vercel uh, because of the pricing. Vercel is a great platform. It works really nicely, but we were worried about the pricing. So we actually took the another route of going on this side, VPS and EC2. We took uh, the DigitalOcean route, again, Linode, DigitalOcean, whichever works for you. So if you're on this route and you are still on the next JS, this is the point where you need to be worried. Uh, why? my initial thought that the next year's 15 when it's going to become uh, it's going to be probably powered by react uh, 16 uh, not 16 react 19 my bad uh, react 19 and i don't know how i came to the conclusion that whole next year's thing is going to be on the react 19 and we're going to be going this path but somehow react 19 is still in the rc and if you just look at the docs it is still in the v18 it's very cooked up react 19 is very cooked up but surprising to my belief, again, I didn't got any confirmation from anywhere, but it was my belief that React 19 is going to be something which is going to be powered, uh, powering up the uh, next year's 15. But before even rolling out that, 
uh, next year's. Again, this was all my belief and my thought. It was never confirmed officially, but hey, why, why are we having this? So again, if this is the case, yes, we need to together look at the docs and we need to see and figure out. By the way, uh, the whole thing, the chaiko.com, the coding hero project, we actually migrated it, it to classic React instead of the next and we found it's really great and it's performing really nicely. We have to do a couple of more things on that. It's project. We are still figuring out the features. Then we'll figure out the uh, the performance part of it. But it's good. It's good. It's handling pretty nice. We have already 10,000 registered user onto that. We have 60 classes. We have over uh, 55 coding heroes and some applications are still pending. So a lot of work is already going on. Now coming back on to reading uh, this part. So together we're going to be reading this up because I am excited. I'm scared <laughs> what's going to happen. One of our another product, Learnist, uses Next.js quite a lot. And we have now, we cannot call it as Next.js because we have modified the framework so much be, uh, with the middlewares and so many things that we run it on AWS. So now it's almost like our own framework. It's not really an accurate term, but we have modified it quite a bit for our use cases. So our whole team is definitely going to watch this video and going to feel a little bit panicked that, oh, oh my God, the next year's 15 version is here. So let's see. And uh, if you're watching this uh, from our team, just let me know in the comment section that how is it going on for you? All right, moving on. Uh, next year's 15 is officially stable and ready for production. Oh, for us, for non-versal user, uh, or you should write it in the parenthesis uh, for all the Versal users. Versal actually gives you all the bells and whistles, and it's too good of a platform. The only thing that doesn't work is pricing, and they have to get uh, really on the expensive side because they do so much of the amazing work. This release build is on the update from both RC1 and RC2. We have focused heavily on stability. That's good to hear. While adding some of the ex exciting updates, uh, we think you'll love. Try next year's 15 today. All right, that's good. So uh, we can actually upgrade to code mode Canary uh, just like this, or you can install the NPM next latest, then React RC and the React DOM RC. So turns out, yes, it is based on the React latest version. That's why we are seeing the RC version being updated. But to my surprise that I can have something in the RC as an upgrade like this, and you're saying that this is ready for the production, little hard to digest, but I'll take you on the word. We have also exciting. Uh, we are also excited to share more about what's coming up at next year's conference. Absolutely, I'll be watching that uh, this Thursday on October twenty fourth. That's almost two days after this video. Here are the fifteen uh, new next year's fifteen. So first of all, uh, it's a CLI, easily upgrade to the next year's. Ah, oh, that's good. Async request API. Oh man, I. What I really don't like to see in these releases is the very second update is breaking. The third update is breaking. So the way how you were writing the code, it's going to break a lot of existing things and you have to relearn a lot of new things, which is already painful, but at least let's have a look. Async request APIs, incremental step towards simplifying rendering and caching model. Oh my goodness, I would love to know more about it. Caching cement, caching man, God. Again, told you middleware and the cache. So these are the two things I really don't like when they have the breaking changes. So caching semantics breaking, fetch request, get route handlers, and the client navigation are no longer cached by default. When it is cached by default and when it is not cached by default, this is so much of a jigsaw puzzle these days. I am losing the count of it. Which one of these things are gonna be cached? Where I have to pass the argument that it's not cached by default. Oh goodness, I have to keep a track of it. I need to build a chart of that. Okay, this is cached, this is not cached. All right, React 19 support, okay. So whatever I was assuming and the whole industry was assuming, this is actually correct. Support for React 19, React compiler, this is experimental, hydration error improvement, all good for that. Uh, Turbo Pack uh, dev, performance and stability. So Turbo Pack is actually nice. I should make a really dedicated video on this one. Uh, this whole thing deserves a talk on this one, but I, I think that's going to not a tutorial kind of a thing. That's more of a discussion and a blog reading kind of a thing. A static indicator, new visual indicator showing static routes during development. I think, personally what I think is there needs to be a lot of improvement in the development side of the next JS because when you are developing the things, it still is very slow to develop the app and see the preview builds in the next JS. It works really nice when you want to deploy it and a lot of caching comes into the picture, lots of CDN comes into the picture. Uh, but what I think is 
it's not that of a beautiful experience while developing the things what we get in the next in the in the react js uh, but again what can we say uh, unstable after api experiment execute code after a response finish streaming oh that's nice i think this is a very much ai centric thing because what happens is when you build any of the ai based application and especially if you have uh, seen uh, the versal sdk of the ai you have noticed that a lot of things actually work when you send a response uh, send a request and the response comes up it is a streaming of the data you see those chat gpt the line by line things that goes on that is a streaming response and I'm able to execute some piece of code as the streaming uh, executes and the finishes up. I think this is really nice and a welcoming change. I would love to see that and probably go for more of the use cases on that. Instrumentation JS API stable, new API for server lifecycle observability. I think this is also a new uh, welcoming change in here. I would be super happy with that. See, uh, a lot of things. Uh, I don't know where the next JS is moving towards on the backend side or the front end side, but in the front end side we have in the next in the React we have a lot of these observability lifecycle methods. If you remember, if you have been coding enough long in the React ecosystem, you know that we used to have these all. Uh, observability states, uh, component did mount, component unmount, and all these things. If you're coming from the app side, yeah, these are the things there. But now we have just one hook use effect and pass on the array with that. Now, similar kind of thing can be done in the, in the server side as well. I need to look more into this one. Very exciting update about this one. Enhanced HTML form with the client side navigation. Oh, they made a big fuss about it on the Twitter as well that now there's a next form that, hey, we can just build the forms out of it. Pretty good, pretty good actually. Uh, TypeScript support, wasn't it already there? Or did I miss something? Uh, Self-hosting improvement, oh goodness, oh goodness. Uh, more control over the cache control headers. Give me all the control. That's what I'm saying. Instead of me going into the framework and doing the tweaks, give me all of this. I think if Next.js does this, a lot of people slightly hate Next.js because of this and only this. Self-hosting Next.js is a pain. Anybody who has worked in the production can tell you this, that hosting Next.js on your own, it's a pain. It's a real pain. And if you give me more control of the cache as well as the middleware, when I want the middleware to execute on the on the fly, on the edge itself, or I want to execute it on the server itself, I think there is nobody to beat Next.js if that control comes in. Right now, the control, uh, the cache is almost nothing. And even on the middleware, you have zero control on that. So I think if you give me those two things, I would be flag bearer of the next JS. Currently, I'm not that much. I, I love it, I love it, but not. Uh, server action security, unguessable endpoints and removal of unused action. What do you mean by unguessable endpoints? Is it something like that? Hmm, I need to look on this. So when you pass on the server actions, your form gets into the day, I need to look into this. I have no idea what this unguessable endpoint means. I need more research on that. Uh, bundling external package, all right. Uh, ESLint support, development and build performance, all right, regular stuff. But it, it takes a lot of effort, but I'm gonna say regular effort. All right, so we have this async uh, request API. This is a breaking change. In the traditional server side rendering, the server waits uh, for a request before rendering any content. All right, that happens. However, not all components depends on request specific data. Hmm. Interesting. So it's unnecessary to wait for the request to render them. Ideally, the server would prepare as much as possible before the request arrives. This enables, to enable this and set the stage for the future optimization, we need to know when to wait for the request. Therefore, we are transitioning APIs that relies on the request specific data, such as headers, cookie params, and search params to be async. Hmm, that's nice. So if you are bringing up the cookies from headers, the cookie store that awaits. All right, need to look more onto this one. Need to do a build a demo app for this one. But this, I think this is a good approach, but breaking change, I don't like it. Uh, moving on, the instrumentation. Uh, the instrumentation file with the register API allow user to tap into the next JS server, lifecycle to monitor performance, track the source error and deeply integrate with observability like the open telemetry. Oh, nice, they have integrated Sentry as well. Pretty nice, pretty nice. We collaborated with Sentry to design on request error. Sentry is a good product actually. Oh, so I need to look on this one, but this is, this is a good one. 
I would look more onto this one and probably do a, a whole dedicated video on instrumentation JS. This is a pretty good one. This is something that they actually posted about on the Twitter from the founders and CEO as well. The new form component extends the HTML form element uh, with prefetching, client side navigation, and progressive enhancement. So now we can just have a really classic form. Imagine we have this much next form and it does everything for us and gets the data on. This is nice, actually, I would say. This is a welcome change. This will help me to build and ship tutorial faster, especially the sign up sign in page. Uh, this can be done faster now. And finally, we have improvement for self hosting. Oh, this is my favorite. This is my favorite. I'm going to read this. When the self hosting, when self hosting application, you may need to, you may need more control over cache control. I need more control over the middleware as well, but okay. Uh, one common case is controlling the stale uh, while revalidate. Okay. One common case is controlling the stale while revalidate period sent for ISR pages. Uh, we have implemented two improvement. Okay. By the way, in case you don't know about the ISR and SSR and all of that, I have a dedicated video on all these acronyms on the channel. Go ahead, check this out. I took my iPad and pen and literally explained what all these acronyms are. Uh, you can configure the expire time value in next config. Okay, so config level changes. I like that. Uh, this was previously experimental SWR Delta. I have zero idea this was there. I'll be honest, I have zero idea it was already there. Probably my team knew it, but I, I was unaware of it. Anyways, updating the default value to one year. Ensure that the most CDNs can fully apply the stale while revalidating data. Oh, this is something that we recently faced and encountered that. So this value of one year on the CDN, uh, this was a pain. So when we were building this Chai Code Coding Hero, what happened is when we migrated from Next.js to the classic React, some of the requests were actually coming from the CDN. So we had the same sign up page and the login page. We moved it and our routes were same. So sometimes we were receiving the request from the CDNs. We didn't want it that and we had no way to actually just crush it off that we don't want it. Eventually, we had to change the route as well to not get that. And that's why you see that uh, chaiko.com slash ch. It was all coding hero at that point. But then we realized it's it's too much of a pain to work with that. We of course, that's not the best way, but we came up with a quick hack. Let's change the URL to slash ch and it's going to just remove this because validating everything for one year, it's it's not an easy way. Uh, so again, ensuring most CDNs can fully apply the stale while revalidate. I want the validation, but in validation, I need more control on that. And it's a classic computer science problem, but this is good. We also no longer override the cache control value with our default values, allowing full control and ensuring compatibility with any CDN setup. Oh, good man, any? Are we sure on that, any? Finally, we have improved image optimization when self-hosting. Okay. Previously, we recommended to install the Sharp for optimizing images on Next.js server. Sometimes we don't need Sharp, actually. Sometimes we have outsourced this whole image optimization things to uh, a lot of things, including uh, a lot of cloud-based services which are available for images, Cloudinary, and whatnot. This recommendation was something missed. Uh, with Next.js 15, you no longer need to manually install Sharp. Next.js will use Sharp automatically. All right, are you shipping it? Next.js will use Sharp automatically when using Next Start or running the standalone output. I need to check. What do you mean by will automatically? I need to look onto this one. But again, this these are all the questions probably you might also be having. Uh, I definitely need to work more onto this one. But hey, this was just a quick video to just discuss the things together about Next.js 15 and a lot of things. So I hope you are excited about this update. You are scared of this one as well. If you found something interesting or something new, just let me know in the comment section. I'll be reading them out. If you have an XJS app already in production, uh, let me know your thoughts. Tweet about it and tag me up there. I would love to know your thoughts. What's going on with the NextJS? And uh, are you just ready to just, they have said it, it's ready for production. So are you updating it today or not? Let me know in the comments.